Good morning and welcome to the August edition of the SSIS Coffee Talks. Um, and the topic for today is the release 23.3. My name is Ross Stack. I am one of the e-learning instructional design designers um, on the business ops user support team. And um, we'll get uh, started with uh, talking about the agenda. So let's tell you what uh, we're gonna be up to today. So um, we're gonna have some housekeeping. We're gonna talk about the Tennyson warning as always when we're recording. We'll have some announcements. We'll get into the release updates. We'll have a poll to get some feedback from y'all. And we'll announce the mentor of the month. And last, we'll um, have some closing announcements. So make sure you stay tuned for those. When it comes to the housekeeping, um, attendees have all, will, will be on mute upon entry, as usual. Uh, to speak, raise your hand using the reaction emoji at the bottom of your screen. And you'll be unmuted by one of our panelists. And you'll be able to ask your question. Otherwise, questions can also be submitted using the chat feature, which will be monitored uh, by our SS Business Ops staff. Closed captioning can be enabled using the CC button located on the bottom left of your screen. This session is being recorded and will be posted on the Minnesota Child Welfare Training Academy website in the near future. A follow-up document will be prepared and distributed to attendees about seven to 10 days following this uh, WebEx event. Here is that wonderful Tennyson warning that um, I told you about. Uh, go ahead and take a moment or two to read through this, and uh, then we will uh, get started with some of our announcements. Okay, hopefully that was enough time for you to read through the Tennyson warning. I am going to uh, pass the mic, so to say, to Cynthia for a quick announcements, a quick announcement about uh, business operations. Good morning. Um, nice to be with everybody this morning. I'm really, um, really glad, um, excited um, to share. We've had a small move. Um, and folks should not have noticed, should not have noticed, but we wanted to make sure to share out with folks that the SSI's business section, so the business side of the system, um, uh, has moved um, divisions within the Department of Human Services from the Child Safety and Permanency Division to the Business Integration Division, which, um, um, so we just wanted to give people a little bit of information about that. Um, we have, um, the decision was made for this move really for three main reasons. Um, really to um, help SSIS section better respond to all of the needs of the business areas that we serve. So child welfare, adult protection, um, and the wide range of, of needs for all of those areas. Um, also to really position us better um, as a, as a critical need system within DHS. So um, really strategically how to um, better position ourselves to have the resources we need um, and work um, with all of the um, benefits of that are available for, for systems underneath DHS. Um, and I think probably the, um, one of the longer terms, but more exciting uh, reason is really to connect us more closely with all of the modernization work that's being done um, within that business integration division. So, so that's a division that works with all of the systems in DHS and um, is really focused on modernizing. And um, so we're excited to be there. Rachel Grimes is the division director and um, we're happy to see, we're happy for that move. Um, folks should not notice um, a difference kind of in our in our day to day operations right away, but we're really hope, hoping, um, you know, the hope is that this is better positions long term, um, short term for increased staffing and things like that long term for modernization. So that is my update. If folks have questions, feel free to reach out to the help desk and, and I'll, we'll be sure to get back to you right away. All right, thank you. 
Uh, this is Ross again. Uh, we do want to thank our pilot agencies, uh, Nicolette, Itasca, and Houston for piloting the version 23.3 for us. Much appreciated. And as always, if you are interested in becoming a volunteer for one of these pilots, please contact our Miss Marcia at her, her um, email address lo, uh, located on the bottom of this page and let her know that you're interested and we'll see about getting you involved. So without further ado, I think uh, we'll get this party started. Here you go. Anna, looks like Thanks, you're Ross. Thank you, Ross. Hello, everyone. Good morning. My name is Anna Chalupka, and I am uh, an SSIS trainer in the user support team. And I will talk about the 23.3 adult protection changes. So on this screenshot, um, the adult protection intervention tab has been redesigned uh, to show a fixed screen with two tabs, uh, the VA uh, and the caregiver or primary support person tabs. And also, as you can see, uh, that the screen now displays a checkbox list of available interventions uh, with response drop downs. So the action button will no longer be uh, used to create a new intervention. Um, also, our interventions are now in alphabetical order, um, except for no interventions, which is located at the bottom of the list. Um, and in these intervention definitions will be added to SSIS um, in the future. Uh, but those definitions are now actually available in the adult protection manual. Next slide. So in the, uh, our interventions, there are 43 uh, interventions that are listed under the uh, VA uh, tab. Um, and this is what um, a better screenshot, what it looks like. Uh, so some of the changes, I just wanted to highlight a, a couple changes here. Um, so we now have um, what used to be domestic, viol uh, domestic abuse services. So it's now victim services. As you can see, we have victim services on the list, but that used to be called domestic abuse services. Um, another example, um, if you're looking for um, like the power of attorney or trust completed or modified, that is now the new name is legal services. Okay, so we have a few um, that uh, um, did have a, a change. So that's uh, this. This is the least uh, list of 43 interventions that are listed under the VA. Um, so here's a, a clearer um, screenshot of it. Um, next slide. This is what uh, the nine interventions that are listed under the caregiver and primary support person. Here's the list of interventions for that tab. Okay, uh, next slide. All right, so I wanna talk about the next column, which is the responses. With the responses column, it is a required field when selecting the checkbox for an intervention, um, except for no intervention. So when you select no intervention, the responses will uh, column will not be required, but it is a required field if you check the other interventions. Okay, um, you do need to it, uh, the drop down does not appear automatically. You have to put your cursor. Um, and place that within the column in order to get your four choices. So the four choices are provided, and that really just means that the AP worker discussed um, that intervention with the VA or the PSP. Okay. Uh, and the, uh, the second uh, choice is not available in service area. Um, the third choice is no funding source. And then the fourth option is unable to engage VA or PSP. Okay, next slide. Okay, so the, uh, the next column is the no intervention response. Now this column is required, this field is required when you're only uh, selecting uh, the checkbox for no intervention, okay? Um, and again, with this option, the option that will not automatically appear in the dropdown, you do need to put your cursor within that column to get your uh, three choices. So the three choices are APS not needed, 
deceased or unable to locate VA. So again, it is a required field when you are selecting the checkbox for no intervention. And again, no intervention is located at the bottom, very uh, bottom of this um, intervention list. Next slide. Okay. Now with the description column, it is a required field only when selecting unique services intervention. Okay, so we've added a unique services intervention um, row and the description will only work for that um, intervention when it's selected. Okay. Um, and the keystrokes to put your description, it is limited to 30 characters. Now, just a couple of things that I wanted to talk about, like what happens with all um, currently open uh, APS work groups? How is this going to transfer and convert uh, from the uh, prior to the 23 changes and to now, okay, with this new format? Okay. We, um, we want to make sure that you guys are reviewing the interventions tab prior to the case closure, because sometimes what you're going to see in the intervention tab is you will see an intervention that is checked, but the responses will be missing. You do need to go into that intervention step and clean that up and enter your missing information, your missing responses. Also, you would maybe see when um, how it converted to uh, the data where um, maybe an open date, uh, an open work group where the provided was selected no on before the prior to 23.3 change. So how you're going to see that in the intervention screen will be um, the responses field will be blank. But uh, in the description, it will have a not provided description that will show up in the description field. So again, if that happens, if you see that you still, you do need to clean that up because you do need to put a, a response uh, and complete that blank response field. Okay, next slide. All right, so when you save the V8, tab with your interventions, it's automatically going to send you to the next tab, which is the caregiver or primary support person tab to complete. Okay, so that's going to be automatic. However, you are not required to enter an intervention for this tab since there are no business rules at this time. Okay, so you could just, um, it's going to force you to take a look at that screen, but you don't have to do anything with that. Okay. Right. Anna, we have a question up from the last oh. screen. Sorry. Okay, the last screen. Okay. Yep, it says if the field is not entered, I believe it was the intervention screen, will yes. there be a data data cleanup error if that field is not entered? Good question. Uh at this time, no. It will okay. not. Nope. And then it so says gonna be able. This is only for cases that are still open during the update. Closed ones will not be affected, correct? So if it's already closed, they won't be affected? If there's already uh, a closed, um, yes, it's not correct. Yep. Um, but if you need to open a close, then you do need to clean up that intervention, um, the responses, because it's gonna be it's gonna be missing. But yes, it's it's a an um uh the our adult protection business staff policy team would like you to to do to do the cleanup that's per their rule but SSIS will not trigger a a data cleanup and then just one more clarifying question okay. if there are open AP AP CMRs and I'm guessing that means AP um, maltreatment reports when 23.3 um updates workers will have to go to the new interventions and do the data entry so should they just want to clarify that if there's open ap maltreatment reports when 23.3 comes out they will need to go back to do the new interventions and data entry 
Yeah, it's best practice, yes, to do that because it may, the data may not, um, may have switched a little bit or the mapping. We just want to double check that it's. Uh, thank you, Emma. Are right. Yep. Anything else? Any other questions? Nope, not yet. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. Um, so our next screen here is uh, about the uh, VA um, maltreatment report. When you print the maltreatment report with or without a reporter, the section A of this printed report um, is updated to display the intervention changes with the new column labels and values. So now we will have the response, we will have the intervention, okay? Uh, and the person, is it the VA? Was it from the VA tab or from the caregiver or the primary support person? Next um, slide. Um, with this change on this uh, slide, um, when you have a, um, when the AP section uh, will also now display the license service provider and facility provider label um, when the field is uh, valued. So what it is in the um, allegations details, uh, allegations tab, if it is a license provider or something with license or facility provider, if that is um, completed or it, it's it's uh, from license facility or uh, facility and that's has that information in the section of the AP in the report with, if you're printing with or without a reporter, that would also now show up under the AP section. Next slide. Um, I just wanted to just briefly talk about uh, resources uh, with adult protection and adult protection uh, training. Uh, we are diligently updating our adult protection SSIS user guide. So with the new updated screen in the interventions tab, um, we will have the user guide updated to show those changes. Um, and we are working on that uh, as soon as possible and hopefully we'll have it um, updated and released and upload to our website in, in a couple weeks. I also just want to remind you guys that there is a APS newsletter, uh, so check that out because um, you can find anything new um, regarding uh, policy and also some SSIS language. Um, and also uh, check out our, make sure that you are also um, uh, checking out the AP policies and procedures uh, website. Next slide. Um, so regarding training, uh, we do have some upcoming training uh, for uh, starting in September. Um, and this technical training is uh, designed to provide an overview of data entry as related to APS. And we do have a, a APS uh, resource specialist that will be uh, in attendance during each class. Uh, these trainings are two half day trainings from nine to one o'clock um, and it's day one and day two. Uh, so day one would be more of like the intake, the mark report, um, and then day two more focused on letters and um, uh, chronology documentation. Um, and we will cover the new interventions tab um, with a new uh, with a new format. Uh, so please sign up in the train link um, and. I look forward to seeing you guys there. Next slide. All right, so with this information, it is just a little bit of um, just general information or contact information for adult protection policy. Um, feel free to send them an email, give them a call, um, and there's a link to their website. Great. So again, my name is Anna Chalupka, DHS SSIS trainer. Thank you so much. Um, and that concludes the 23.3 adult protection changes. Um, and Cassie's going to talk about the vict victim info tab within the child maltreatment report. Take it away, Cassie. Good morning, everybody. Um, this is Cassie with the SSIS Tier 1 Help Desk. Um, talking about a little bit of a change to the child, child maltreatment report. 
Um, it's actually just one question. Um, and it refers to the child maltreatment reports when open in an assessment work group. Um, under the victim information tab, we're displaying a new question in the victim living situation section at the top. The question is, does child have mental health concerns? Um, this question will be required to be completed for each child in order to save the victim tab. Um, and that's also required to close the CMR when status is assessment completed. Um, this question has been added because the information is required as one of the automated prevention services eligibility criteria. Um, it's just a general question and a yes does not require the child to have and to already have uh, had a CMH screening assessment or any diagnoses. Um, a worker may answer yes based on caregiver or a collateral report. A review of records with relevant information within the past 6 months or a workers observation and discussion with the caregiver. It's basically just it's another click, but it does set us up for. Meeting all of our um, requirements. Next slide please and then we have some updates to our documents. Um, we have our QRTP assessment referral form. Um, and it, the change is in the sentence and corresponding response fields um, removed from the placing agency section. So with this change, we wanna not forget to add the RTF document template, template header to the updated document after the statewide release. Um, we also have a fix to our social and medical history for the child and foster care form, the DHS um, 675-4A. Um, the size of the field for describing the um, child's abuse and neglect history and the reason the child came into foster care has been increased. So now we can see the full text that we need to put in there. Um, and then one more change, all RTF documents with tables of data with multiple headers um, will only show us one header in the record instead of multiple. So I think the best um, the best way I've seen this displayed is say we have like the genogram and we have race and there's multiple races listed. Instead of it saying race, African-American, race, um, Caucasian or whatever, it's gonna say race with one header and then list out all of the other ones instead of um, having multiple. This actually is really a good thing um, it's going to make it way more legible and a lot more user friendly for all of our clients. Um, and it's just going to make it all work a lot better and take up less space, which we all enjoy. I think that's all I had off to Marsha. Hey, thanks, Cassie. Yeah, I'm excited to, to see those genograms look a lot cleaner too. Um, okay, everyone, I am Marsha Riss, the Change and Engagement Consultant with SSIS BizOps. Um, so I want to talk about a couple of additional data cleanups that we're going to be seeing. So these are a couple of data, new, new data cleanups um, that are pertaining to foster parent relationships tab on placements. So the first one that you see, that first one on the left, um, is a data cleanup that says at least one foster parent relationship to the child must match the current placement setting. And this appears when the placement start date is 10-1-22 or later. Um, so anything currently, um, currently open that started after, or on or after 10-1-2022. And the current relationship on the foster parent tab is blank or doesn't match the chosen setting on the placement screen. So remember, there is available help text on that foster parent tab screen. So if you are needing a reminder of the combinations allowed for the various settings, you know, the relative, kin, non-relative, um, take a look at that. So that we have a nice little grid on there. It should be pretty helpful. And then that second data cleanup is another new data cleanup, which says, the placement, or I should say, it says placement foster parent must be an individual provider for the current provider. And what this essentially is doing, it's comparing the person on the foster parent tab 
to the individual providers listed in the BizOrg on the placement. So making sure that, you know, if something changed on that BizOrg, we're gonna catch that in a data cleanup um, to make sure that, you know, those are all matching up as intended. So both of these data cleanups are related to the AFCAR's 2020 changes and ensure improved data integrity for the increased detail on foster parents that's now required for federal AFCAR's reporting. Next slide. Um, and I might just be seeing a lag there. Are you guys seeing the next slide, slide 23? Ross, sorry. My stuff is a little laggy. There it is, now I see it. Thank you, I see it now. Okay, um, a new data cleanup for child in continuous placement will now show when the professionally determined condition screen is either not completed or requires updating. So of note, the repository errors pertaining to professionally determined disabilities were inactivated back when the screen was changed from professionally determined disabilities to professionally determined conditions. And there is a plan to have at least one of these errors updated and reactivated in a coming release. But until then, please make sure that you're reminding your staff that this screen is required for all children in placement and should be updated every 12 months while the child remains in a continuous placement. So a good rule of thumb is whenever you're updating an out-of-home placement plan, making sure that these um, individual, you know, the, the um, participant information is updated, things like this, the professionally determined conditions. So just making sure that everyone is aware of this one. Um, and we used to have, I believe, um, a couple of different, a couple of different repository errors pertaining to this. Um, but like I said, when the screen was changed, those haven't been updated yet. And so that's that's in the works and in the plans for the future. So hopefully we'll catch those. But in the meantime, making sure that we're paying attention to the data cleanup. Next slide. So the next one is um, open placements with unlicensed provider report defect. So in the SSIS update issue 603, which we put out last May, we notified agencies of a defect in which the open placements with unlicensed provider report, which is found under the general reports in the placement folder, was not accurately including unlicensed providers associated with a, I'm sorry, with an open placement with the setting type of foster family home kin. So this setting type was added more recently and the report had not been updated to reflect that change. And so an agency had caught that, let us know, and so it, we have now fixed it. So this defect has been fixed. The report was adjusted to accept the new service classes created with FFPSA. Um, and we also added, so not only did we add the family foster home kin to the list of setting types to include on the report, since we're in there cleaning that report up, um, we also, um, have the child co-located with adolescent parent, that placement reason, we have that now excluding from the report as it should have been originally. So um, the report should be more reliable now, right? So hopefully that's helpful. Next slide. And actually this next one is for Erica. Yes. Hi everyone, this is Erica Jepson, uh, child welfare subject matter expert with SSIS Business Ops. And the next couple slides I'm going to be talking about are just a couple changes regarding QRTP. Um, so this one is a new warning message that will show for potentially certified QRTP placements, indicating that the dates for the start of the placement are not within the continuous placement. This is really important because if the continue or the placement start date is not within the continuous placement, the EPR function um may not be or will not be working which can impact the epr reviews and 4e claiming so this is really just to remind workers to check to make sure that the placement start date is within the continuous placement next slide then the next slide is um just a change in some um labels the the Extended placement review screen, you will you will see that they no longer display the approver and the credentials. It is the, the data is still being maintained in the behind the scenes, but it is not going to be going to be displayed. And then there was also um, some rewording of the attestation label to indicate that the agency director has reviewed the out of home placement plan. Uh, most 
recent court order information from the most recent court hearing and the additional relevant information before making a status decision. This used to allow for the designee to, to do that. And this, these modifications happen because of clarification from the administration on children, youth and families with the US Department of Health and Human Services that it must be the director and it cannot be the designee to um, review and approve the Q QRTP extended placement reviews. So that is why these changes occurred. Um, it is also important just to know that the, the agencies are responsible to um, have record of the director's review, including name, signature, and date. Um, they must be in the agency's paper or electric files. That's it. All right, thanks, Erica. Yep, as I say, I believe we're back to Marsha. Yep, yep, you are. Um, okay, so we have security um, for SS for those of you who are doing uh, SSIS um, admin, adding users, editing users. Previously, there was a manage staff function available, and that has that had been added um, to many roles. This has been inactivated as there was never actually any functionality associated to the manage staff function in SSIS. So having it there caused agencies some confusion from time to time when they tried to add it for a user. So we removed that. Um, there is nothing for agency mentors to do for this. The cleanup to remove the function from roles um, um, I think I said that wrong. So there is no cleanup, right, for them to do anything. The cleanup um, will be done by our, um, by DHS and, and just remove that if it was added to any of the roles that you had. Um, but it shouldn't affect anything because there was no functionality. So we just wanted to give you a heads up since it had been asked about a few times by mentors trying to use it. It kind of caused some confusion. So now you won't see it and it shouldn't cause any more confusion. Um, one more note, it's not on this slide. Um, it was added like late yesterday, um, but we wanted to make sure that we also mentioned, and it will be in the what's new in the release notes, um, that there was a security enhancement for passwords. Uh, and I think we talked a little bit about this at the last release as well, but weak passwords are now not going to be I'm sorry, are going to be recognized and rejected by Active Directory and will display a message that says password change rejected by Active Directory. Try using a better password. So that little pop up will come up. So an example of rejected passwords are like if you use the word password and you replaced the the O with a zero and you put a um, exclamation, that's considered a weak password. Um, things like spring 2022 exclamation mark. So it, it meets the criteria for a password. However, it's too weak of a password, even though it meets too many people could use it or guess that one. And so you'll get that message. So just a reminder, the new passwords must have at least eight, eight characters, including, and this is, this is not a change, um, including one lowercase, one uppercase, one digit and one of the allowed special characters, just those ones that are allowed, not any special character. So um, we did include that also in the SSIS update that I think went out today um, or is coming out shortly. Um, so that will also, you'll see that in a few different places coming out, but I just wanted to make sure we made note of that. Next slide. And I think this is Sam's. Thanks, Marcia. This is Sam Breidenbach, fiscal subject matter expert with SSIS BizOps. We just have a couple of small items with this release for fiscal. For the first one, comments field, so comment tab for payments, service arrangements, healthcare claims, and MAPSIs are now limited to 4,000 characters. So users cannot type past that 4,000 character mark. It was previously allowing workers to save over the 4,000 characters, and then they would get error messages after that each time they were clicking on the service arrangement or healthcare claim, et cetera. So that is now just limited to the 4,000 characters per comment. And the second thing was an item that was missed when um, brass code 480 for children's mental health, residential services path, the mental health third path was added, the special cost code 17, rule five room and board should have been associated to that brass code. And that has now been fixed. So on payments, when a client is selected with brass 480, you can select special cost code 17 as well. And that's all I have. So we can move to the next slide and I'll hand it back to Marsha. 
Great. And, and before we jump into this poll feedback, so this is really going to be about some things that are coming for the next release. Just want to give us a little time. Let's see if there's any questions regarding any of the release items that we talked about so far. I don't see anything in chat. All right, we will move on here. So, um, Oops, let me move on too. here we go. So there are some changes coming um, for the child protective services plan and the family assessment service plans that are in the works for the coming releases um, to, pre pre to prepare for the prevention services plan requirements. So instead of two separate plans, there will be one template from which a worker will choose which route to go within the setup. So they'll open up the setup, they'll decide which route they're gonna go, family assessment or child protection. Um, when copying from older plan templates, Minnie can only choose to which one, I'm sorry, Minnie can only choose one of those two plans to merge from, right? So they're working on this right now and they're really wanting some feedback to decide well, which is gonna be the most beneficial for agencies. If you can only, if you're having to copy from an older plan, either the Child Protective Services Plan or the Family Assessment Services Plan, and you're creating one of the new plan templates, which one's gonna be the most beneficial um, for your agency to have access to so that you don't have to create a brand new one. So we're like, what we're liking to do today is to get some feedback from agency mentors on which of these two existing templates, the Child Protective Services Plan, or the Family Assessment Service Plan, your agency would prefer to be able to copy from when creating the new Consolidated Services Plan. Whichever is not chosen will not be able to be copied from once the new Consolidated Template is in place. Instead, the worker would need to create a new plan using the new template. If, if you had, like, let's say we said, we're gonna stick with the CP Services Plan being able to be copied into the new plan, then if you had a Family Assessment Services Plan, you won't be able to use the copy function any longer with that. So I'm gonna post the poll that you see on the slide. Um, and if you don't see it on the right side of your WebEx screen, you may need to click on the three little dots in the bottom right corner and choose polling. So give me one second here and let me pull up that poll. And I'll tell you as soon as you can see it. Oops, poll. And I'm going to open the poll. Marcia, there's a question in the chat wondering if, because the um, they don't work with service plans, they'd like to be able to ask the workers which would be more beneficial. Is that a possibility? Yeah, you know, send, go ahead and send me, you know, if you have something you're, you're checking with your agency and you want to um, just let me know after, I would say if you can send me this week and then I can just add those results to our poll. That would be just fine. So you guys are seeing, oh, I see, I see results coming in. So we'll just leave it here for a minute. Again, if you're not seeing that poll, you might have to click on in the bottom right corner of your screen. There's the three little dots and you might have to click on polling to see that. And we'll give it another 30 seconds and then we will move on. Great. All right. It looks like things are slowing down. Um, again, if you didn't respond or you want to change your response, you had a response, but you know, you went back to your agency and found out, oh, that's not really the right one that would benefit us the most. Send me an email this week. So my email was um, earlier, I think on the on the earlier slide where we talked about pilot agencies. Feel free to send me an email um, with that and I will I will add that to our poll results and then I will get that over to our minute staff. And if anybody has any questions, I can't see the chat right now because I have the poll up. Um, but if anyone has any questions, let us know. Um, I do have Darla Aman from our minute staff here who could explain that if if you have any questions on that change. All right, that's it for me.
Okay, so um, since there are no additional questions for Marcia and Darla, we'll just move on and talk a little bit about the SSIS resources available to you. Um, not much has changed here. It's basically the same. You have your SSIS resource page and county link. Um, wanted to kind of give an honorable mention to the area that um, I have um, a little bit of uh, activity in and a little bit of passion for, and that's the uh, SSIS training section. So you'll see that there are some of those uh, e-learning um, or micro-learning modules that um, I've talked about when introducing myself as being an instructional designer for um, BizOps user support group. And uh, so you can see my some of my wares in the fiscal online training and also the permanency training that you don't see on the screenshot. It's down a little bit lower on the list of the SSIS training available, but there is a link um, underneath the SSIS Coffee Talks um, archive that um, has the permanency uh, e-learnings that I'm working on currently. So as I am developing and finishing these uh, modules, I am adding them to the website. So the whole series is not complete yet, but um, we figure it's better to have what we do have done out and available for not only you as the mentors, but anybody that uh, contacts you with questions about um, any of these uh, topics that are under the training, you can certainly refer them to these trainings and, and have them take the training themselves as well. Uh, so keep that in mind. You also have uh, release information that can be found um, on here as well and uh, fiscal documentation as well as worker documentation. So I think that's uh, good for the resources page. And I am going to uh, talk a little bit more about um, this coffee talks and where you can uh, ask questions in case one comes up or you have anything you need to um, find out from our SSIS help desk folks. And there's the address for that. And also you can uh, view this coffee talk, the recordings and the reference materials are available on the Minnesota Child Welfare Training Academy and the link is um, on this page as well. Also, uh, we want to kind of give a reminder to you guys that we need you to update uh, the help desk with any uh, changes to the mentor or mentor contacts so that we can keep our mailing list updated. Uh, we want to keep you all informed and um, our mailing list has to be updated in order for us to do that um, effectively. So. Um, please contact the same SSIS um, help desk email address on this page if there's any changes to your contact or there's a new mentor or anything like that. Um, with that being said, um, gives me a good segue to announce Cassie back again to talk about the mentor of the month. We would really like to celebrate Sandy Block from Benton County as our August Mentor of the Month. Um, we received a very special request from another mentor from a different county asking to nominate Sandy as the next Mentor of the Month. And doesn't that really say so much about her? Um, and when it was brought to our team as one of the options, um, we thought it was a great idea and it was really clear that she's the right choice. Um, so some of the comments we've shared or we've heard shared about working or interacting with Sandy include um, that she is wonderful. She has always helped with questions and interpretations of policy and bulletins. Um, she's such a lovely person and has contributed so much both at Benton County, but also to help other mentors and other agencies for many years now. Uh, Sandy used to host the Region 5 mentor meetings and help make them enjoyable and helpful to all who attended. And I hear she brought dessert, which is always appreciated. I don't know about you guys. I'm very food motivated. Um, we also learned that Sandy's retiring soon. So let's give a special thank you to Sandy in Benton County, along with a big congratulations to her. Um, so thank you so much, Sandy. 
And with that, I'd also like to say, um, if your agency is interested in setting up an individual agency session with our um, SSIS staff, either in person or virtual, please reach out to the help desk and we'll get that to whoever we need to and get things set up for you guys. Okay, congrats, Sandy. And uh, next thing we'd like to cover is uh, what's coming up next. Uh, we want you to save the date. There's a September's co talk, um, coffee talk coming up. Um, we're planning a fun and potentially interactive coffee talk for September. For this to work, we need you guys to help lend your expertise to other agency users across the state. Send your favorite or most useful tip or trick to our mentors, mentor coordinator, Heidi Morris, and we will fit as many as we can into the September SSIS Coffee Talk. While doing so, remember, October is the next open discussion Coffee Talk. For these, we need your questions. You can send those into Heidi as well, anytime, and we will compile and present in October based on what you guys wanna talk about. So with all that, we wanna thank you for your time and uh, we'll see you again next month. And uh, you know, stay golden, Minnesota. Radio Ross out.